Good evening, Sagittations, my JH fans. Let's start off with Portia and Curtis. Now, for the majority of this conversation, it's pretty much like Friday's episode. All Portia does is, is make excuses and cries and just the same crap that she was meant to be saying before, she was meant to be saying it today. Um, and, you know, Curtis was upset about it. He was. He also found out that Stella and Jordan knew, and he was upset about that as well. You know what? I can understand where Curtis is coming from with Jordan. Now, I know a lot of people are there thinking that Jordan didn't owe Curtis anything because of their past and all the crap that went down. And I would agree with that if they weren't on still speaking terms. If they still weren't on speaking terms, then I would understand that. But the fact that they are, the fact that they are friends, the fact that for the most part, Jordan decided to let a lot of crap that they had, that they argued about their issues go and, you know, continue to still be in his life, I can understand where Curtis is coming from. Because every day that she talked to that man and she didn't say anything, that was a lie by omission. And a lie by omission is still a lie. Now, what I think is going to end up happening, and what I 100% disagree with, is the fact that Curtis is going to come across as more angrier at, at Jordan than he is at Portia. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit there and say, if that's going to be out of pocket, I know that's going to end up happening. Because I know how he ten how he generally tends to talk to Jordan, which is really odd. Because I'm just like, how do you sit there and date a man like that? That's just that disrespectful to you, you know. He was so quick to sit there and leave Jordan, not bother to get marriage counseling or anything like that. Was just very sit there and and very quick to sit there and leave Jordan, but. You know, when Portia was like, you know, we can get past this, we can make this work. And, you know, he was like, hey, listen, I'm leaving. I don't know if I'm going to be back or not. I'm just like, he's going to find a way to make that work. He's going to find a way to make that work. The stuff that Jordan was doing was apparently unforgivable. But we're holding, the inf we're holding information about the possibility that that, that child was, was, was his for 19 years. He's going to find a way to sit there and forgive that. And we're all going to sit there and call BS on that. You know, in all reality, as, as angry as Curtis is, I feel like Taggart should even be more angry at her. I really do. Because for 19 years, he was almost practically fed a lie. And that's messed up in itself. Um, Sprainer fans are going to be happy. Um, Spencer and, and Trina kissed. That, that was pretty much about it. Spencer pretty much kind of, well, he pretty much comforted her and tried to, you know, somewhat give Trina, like, like try to look at it from your mother's perspective a little bit. Which is kind of odd because it was like, you couldn't look at it from your father's perspective, but. You know, when Trina was sitting there like, well, you know, what happened to her happened to her and yada, yada, yada. And she was all upset. You know, Spencer was like, try to sit there and see it from, you know, from your mother's point of view. And I'm like, so how's that whole bonding experience going with Nicholas? But whatever. Anyway, the kiss. So if you're a Spencer and Trina fan, you'll be happy about that. Now, let's talk about this whole stuff that, that went down on Spoon Island. Um... But Ava and, and Felicia and Ryan and Esme and Austin and Heather and I feel feel like I'm forgetting someone. Let's talk about that whole mess for a minute. So Austin did one of getting hugged. And at some point Esme got so scared that she fainted. Right? Now, it's your typical hostage situation. There's one point where um, Ryan turns around and I think Felicia hits him with a fire poker. Esme runs out. This is after she wakes up. Esme runs out and Ryan goes after her. 
And for some odd reason, Heather decides to just let both of them go. He just she she just decides to let Ava and Felicia go. And at first, Felicia was like, "No, I'm not leaving without you know, I'm not leaving. I'm not like, oh, I'm not I'm not leaving um a man behind or whatever." And Ava's like, "Uh, she's giving us a way out. Let's go. We can sit there and go back and get help." I'm like, "Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop." First of all, I'm just like. Heather, that is a homicidal sociopath, decided to let these two go. I mean, it's, 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 it's not December, so we can't sit there and say it's Christmas spirit. So I just don't understand why she decided to let both of them go. But um, plot, I guess, I, I, <laughs> I have no idea. That made zero sense to me. Um... Meanwhile, you got Kevin, you got Laura, Mac that wants to go guns blazing, and Jordan there. But, you know, they decide to sit there and wait, formulate a plan, and then go to Spoon Island with Laura sitting there drawing them some sort of a map. Um, so it's like the best route or whatever is sit there and try to get to the castle or whatever. Now, how... You know, how Ryan, and also, by the way, um, Ryan does catch up to Esme, and Esme's water broke. So, I'm very curious how they're going to sit there and get out of this unscathed. You got helicopters in the air, you got cops traveling there by boat. I don't understand how they're going to get out. And also, Laura kind of drew them, like, the best map or whatever to how to get through the tunnels and stuff like that. So it's going to be very interesting seeing how they're going to escape. And seeing if Ryan's going to leave his daughter at such a critical time of need when her water just broke. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting a lot of things. One second. I'm still thinking about what's Gregory's purpose on this show. So... He comes to the office. Alexis is already, you know, she's already ready to celebrate and everything like that. And she got the champagne or the sparkling, I'm sorry, the sparkling water. Um, and Gregory is like, yeah, I can't do it. My, he says something like it was a conflict of interest. I'm like, okay. So they talk shop for a little bit about, um, Esme and then the killer and everything like that and Smoltz, which honestly tell you I hope I see I hope I never see that character ever again. Um they talk about the letter and after I guess after Gregory leaves or something like that, um Alexis figures out who the killer is. So she goes into the docks and she lets I guess Laura know and Kevin know like who's the killer is. Of course, they don't talk about it today, so it really doesn't matter. Also, Kevin finds out that he has a niece, so there's that. I feel like that's about it for the most part. For the most part, I would sit there and say this was a good episode. For the majority of it, even though um, the conversation with Curtis and Portia kind of got monotonous after a while, because it felt like it was the same conversation that we had on Friday, but for the most part, this was a solid episode. Solid episode. I, I didn't really care for the Gregory stuff. I, I still don't get his purpose on the show. I don't understand why Alexis is, is really wanting him to work at this paper so bad. Like, he could just come in there every now and then and sit there and be an advisor or on a contributor or whatever you want to sit there and call those people that come in, a consultant maybe. I don't know. I just don't feel like he needs to work at the newspapers for them to have some sort of romance. Um, also, if you know, just, if you sit there and think that's a conflict of interest, I don't know how that would work with Alexis being Gregory's boss and them going out. So that's a whole probably HR nightmare. But yeah, I feel like that's pretty much about it. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe. If there's anything that I missed, because for some odd reason, I feel like I did miss stuff, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, we'll talk about it during the live stream. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, 
Monday through Friday, but we'll sit there and talk about it tonight. With that being said, I'm going to go. I want to thank you for watching. Be safe, and I will see you in the next video.